themselves. That's Elaine, Dave, everyone apart from Bex, so we can hear you. <laughs> and it's over to you, Bex. Thank you. Do introduce yourselves and then take us into the branding future. Okay, right. Let me just uh, stop the video and share the screen. Here we go. Okay. So my name's Bex Neal and I'm a designer and brand consultant working with purpose-led organisations to achieve a brand that they love. And this is done by distilling their brand story. And it's helping to change the world brand by brand. Now we actually have this really unique opportunity right now to shape the future that we want to see. So today what I wanted to share with you is five points, each beginning with the letter P, so it should hopefully be easy to remember. Uh, covering tips, strategy and branding insights into how you can actually start to do this. So the very first one is presence and that's online, being that familiar voice, but also being present in your everyday life. So that's to be there to listen, uh, to take notice of what's going on around you. Now by maintaining your presence online, you provide your clients, your team and your network a sense of reassurance and stability Whilst through your day to day presence, you're actually placing yourself in the best refresh position to be able to respond to those who need you. So you'll be thinking and looking out for your clients, your colleagues and your loved ones, as well as your own needs. But how do you actually do this during a time of stress, anxiety and overwhelm? Firstly, it's really important to remember that we're working in unprecedented circumstances in a worldwide pandemic. And we can't forget that fact. So you really need to be kind to yourself on those days when you feel less than okay about things. Your well-being and that of those around you is absolutely core, cool, whether that's physical, mental or emotional. And the focus and importance that well-being has regained during lockdown is really set to continue to grow. So what we can do is to focus. Focus on the things that you can control right now. For example, one of the ways um, that we've all found a really effective keeping in touch and keeping contact with our clients and family is online video calls and meetings. And it has brought many benefits. It's saving time, it's saving money, including you know, you've got the lack of commute. Um, you've got this ability to liaise and virtually meet with people face to face from across borders, um, right through to different countries. However, it's also becoming a source of fatigue and stress for many. Whilst it's great to see faces, it also feels unnatural being on camera the whole time. Your brain is constantly processing and analysing information from a variety of inputs, um, from the different platform tools, the various notifications, um, different screens, as well as body language. You're trying to interpret that all the time in the tone of voice. So I wanted to share with you some tips to help you maintain focus and presence, in particular for the, the um, increasing amount of online meetings, which is set to continue. Um, due to its effectiveness. So the very first one is to minimise distractions. So for example, if you're using um, video calls like Zoom, it's selecting the speaker view rather than the gallery view. So you're focused on the presentation that's being given. The next step is to hide your video preview screen from your own view. It's really unnatural to kind of see yourself on, on video and your eyes will constantly kind of go to you because of that unnaturalness. Um, so by, you can eliminate that by hiding your own video. Also another point is to avoid checking comments box until there are natural breaks within the meeting or there are certain tasks that require it. it just helps you to keep focused and not multitasking. Uh, the next important bit is to increase recognition. And you can help people to instantly spot you within a crowd. So your online meetings you can have from like 17 we've got today through to you know, I've been on meetings where it's been in the 90s and the hundreds. It's really hard to stand out in uh, amongst all these different screens that are being shown. And one of the ways you can do this is with a branded backdrop or having some of your brand visuals that can be seen, but also to make sure your name is clearly uh, represented on your title. A recommendation from the Mental Health First Aiders is to adopt a counselling hour uh, for your online meetings. Now this is recommended to be 15 minutes long, which then allows you that final 10 minutes of the hour to actually write up notes and process the information that you've been given. And a big difference that you can make is introducing transition periods. And I think in lockdown, this is one thing that's uh, 
pretty much <laughs> disappeared for a lot of people uh, between their working day, the different tasks and through to their home life. So you can add breaks in between uh, meetings, etc. using things like going, making a cup of tea, going for a walk, calling a friend, doing some reading, um, learning a new skill, or just simply stretching. But it's just to get you back in that frame of mind and refresh ready for the next task at hand. Now, video calls are also very much a new technology for many people. So providing instructions along with alternative ways for them to reach you if they do run into issues trying to connect will help alleviate some of that anxiety that surrounds video calls. Also think about providing training where there are skill gaps too. And this is an area that a lot of charities and homes have been able to help their resident patients with, uh, to keep in regular contact with their families, but also to form online support groups and peer-to-peer -peer groups. It's a really small act, but the actual benefits to the patient's wellbeing and that of their loved ones has been an enormous impact. And it will be something those charities and groups will be remembered for. For others though, this skill gap has unfortunately resulted in services being halted or having very extremely limited reach. So the next P, purpose. People want human connection and lockdown has highlighted this need even more. Through separation and physical distancing, it's actually bringing people closer together, which has been amazing to see. There's sincerity, there's been kindness, there's people pulling together to share goodwill and overcome the different challenges that we all face. It's also provided an opportunity to really get to know one another and to support each other. So in terms of your content that you're putting out there, you can share your personal insights and your shared interests, messages of hope. Think about the good news stories that you can share, helpful tips, you know, think about your safety precautions and different processes that you've got in place to keep people safe. Shine a light on your client's work as well as supporting local causes and your network. Be creative and keep it simple. Illustrations and infographics are a really powerful and effective way to communicate your story and the key information. It communicates all, this, um, all these important factors in a very short amount of time, but it also increases the understanding and it helps to build brand awareness and trust. And another great communication tool is video and photographs for Dave. <laughs> um, but yeah, with videos, you can create remotely on your phone. Again, taking photographs and taking your phone. Um, you can share those and repurpose. And if it's um, something you're uncomfortable with being in front of the camera, you, there are options. You don't have to be there. You can do voiceovers. You can put together a slideshow. It could be a montage of photos, testimonials, presentation slides or even sharing content that's just a simple moving graphic or using animated text to attract that attention. Now, presence and purpose, they go hand in hand in how you live out your brand and how you remain relevant. So the next three Ps are three steps to help you strategically start to shape the future of your business. First of all, pause. It sounds simple but it is very easy to forget, especially during times like this. But it's more important now than ever before to make some space amidst all your busy tasks and your responsibilities to pause and rebalance. To find that space where you can actually be with your thoughts and do something that makes you happy and restores that feeling of you. So maybe it's a hobby, maybe you're um, going for a walk or you're trying a new recipe. Whatever it is that makes you feel more you, make sure you implement that into your routine and day. And it's here um, that you can start to see things in a new way and perhaps identify different opportunities or new passions that you can introduce into your working life as well. So the second step after you've done your pausing is to ponder. So think reflectively about how things are for you right now. How things were in your business, so right back from when you started to where you are now. What have you achieved? Especially think about the different things you've implemented and that's worked really well during lockdown. And then the next stage is to think about where you want your business and your life to be. How can you create that sort of synergy between the two? Um, by doing this, you can discover what's in alignment, but you can also find out what needs repositioning to help set you apart and help you to reach those goals. Positive changes will come from these challenges that we're currently facing, 
and we have this opportunity now to shape the future that you want to see. So the final step is to plan and that's short term as well as longer term. So what changes can you make which will help increase morale and well-being for yourself and those around you? Is your brand giving the right impression? Is it positioning you where you want to be? Are your values and purposes being communicated in everything that you say and do? Now, one of the places I always start with my clients is with their brand story. This provides a strong, unified foundation on which everything else is built upon. And from here, you can use your brand story to continually filter your business decision-making tasks and help you forge that path forward. One of the key ways of working with clients through these very steps is conducting brand audits. So it's working with you and alongside you to identify what's currently working towards your vision, discussing any areas that are out of alignment and giving you personal recommendations along with design support where you need it to actually help you reposition your brand and build a strong collateral of brand assets that communicate what you do. So short term, a strong brand gives you confidence, it gives you positioning and it helps to raise awareness. Long term, a strong brand strategically builds relationships it builds that recognition and trust. It generates a return on your investment in more ways than just profits. By communicating your purpose and values consistently, a strong brand can increase the number of people that you reach, as well as the opportunities to help, making a difference in the world through your brand. Now this takes us back full circus, full circus, full circle to the action, being present and being purposeful in all that you say and do. So remember the five P's, presence, purpose, pause, ponder and plan to help keep you on track and keep you moving forward and shape the future that you want to see today. So if you have any questions or if you'd like a virtual one-to-one -one coffee afterwards, um, send me an email and we'll get something scheduled in. But I'm here to help you inspire and change the world brand by brand with design to tell your story. Excellent. Thanks, Bex. And if you, there we go, everyone's back on the screen together. So it may not be so much a questions or if you have an observation or want to reinforce what Bex has shared with us today, but thank you. It's, it's very good that we've got some positivity in the room today about looking forward. And uh, of course, that is really, really important at the moment. Uh, anyone want to go first? make a point, ask a question. Yeah, Caroline, thank you. Um, I think that was very good. Very good, um, Bex. Um, I, I think it's important also to consider if you've got anything hanging around because emotions have a habit of resurfacing when you don't expect them. So you could be walking down the road or in a meeting and all of a sudden you get a memory coming up of something that's upset you or particularly as we're not seeing other people at the moment, um, you're sort of dwelling on. Um, mm. So you can, you can get stuck in your own stuff. Um, so if you need any help with that sort of thing, um, that's, what I, that's what I do. I like sorting people out. <laughs> that, was, that was excellent, Bex. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else got any observations about the power of imagery? Oh. <laughs> Ian, go for it. <clears throat> yeah, great presentation, Bex. Thank you for that. Um, I'm a bit like you. I'm a sort of a business coach myself. Um, and I just wondered what your thoughts were on um how people are adding value to what they may have learned during c19 yeah i think it's really important that people are sharing their stories out there so whether it's achievements um that have been made it might be things that their team have got involved in especially with those who've been on furlough some of them i know have gone off and done some charity work and all of that can have a really good reflection on your own business so it's really looking about just sharing what's going on in the world, you know, keeping that transparency, being open, being human, creating those relationships. Um, so very much it's 
yeah, sharing everything that they've learned and going forward. And I think with the Zoom calls and things, a lot of them you've been on, I think it's quite a new platform for a lot of people. And there's always a little tool that you hadn't recognised. And I found in some of the meetings, you know, people, you can actually draw on screen. And I didn't realise you could do that on presentations and things, which is quite, quite impressive. So there's quite a few different things that people can do. And I think it's going to be quite exciting to see how the platform actually develops ongoing because it's going to be thing that people use more and more. It's um, opened up so much more reach, especially with charities as well, trying to continue that support for their clients who will be feeling completely isolated at the beginning of the lockdown, especially when they're high risk and they've had to you know, completely isolate and shield. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite a powerful tool, but it just needs, a, it needs to be used carefully. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree, Bex. And just with one or two people in mind on here, uh not mentioning any names uh, the hospitality industry how do you see that as uh, being very vital in terms of how we, it, it adapts to this new uh new future sorry can you say the question again yeah i was saying uh, relevant to a few people here the hospitality industry yeah. uh, how do you uh, see that um really progressing um uh and adapting to the new future um i think it's looking in terms of you know when you communicating what you're doing so there's the things that you've got in place all the safety precautions that you've got on um there uh just making you really want to make people feel less anxious i think that's going to be the key thing to encourage people to come out more because i think it's very it feels very strange the different changes that are coming into place and i think to make that feel easier for people is you know, saying what you are doing to keep people protected. Again, that can be done by Zoom meetings. You can do virtual tours, um, showing what you've got in place, um, how you're looking after them, and sort of that the warmer welcome is waiting for them. So it's sort of showing them sort of before, during, and after testimonials. Just keep keep that communication going. Absolutely, and um, that's been a key theme all the way through these these talks. Um, we'll go to Dave, but Sarah, in a moment, I wondered if you are finding that people who are wanting to travel, you are having to, I don't know, pivot is the word that's not, we're not supposed to be using because everyone's using it, but uh, some rebranding and about travel. But Dave, you had your hand up first. Yeah, there was a couple of things, which and I've just sort of, what Bex just said is just adding something else on to that. Um, first of all, what Bex said about sort of your personality and things like that, <clears throat> one thing in mind is people buy from people. So things like Instagram, uh, what I've learned from a few people and works really well is for my Instagram, my, my feed is, is basically my portfolio, all my work and things like that. But then your stories, that can be anything because it disappears after 24 hours. So people get to know you. So if you're out walking in the forest or away from work, post that on your stories and people get to know you. And that could create connection with if you've got the same interests that they have, they then start following you, they'll then start seeing your feed, and then that could potentially lead to more work. Um, the other thing is a little tip. Um, if you notice my backdrops got the QR code and everything on, I discovered an app the other day called Hi Hello. Um, it's actually a digital business card. So you can actually meet somebody networking, they can just scan your phone and your details go straight into their phone and save into their phone. But if you do a desktop version, they also let you create a Zoom background with your, if, if basically if you open the camera phone now, scan that QR code, my digital business card will appear on your phone. So again, for Zoom meetings and things like that, it's another good way of getting people to get your contact details if you're in a big group saying you don't get to speak to everybody. Um, and going back to what Bex just said about um, showing what you're doing to put safety measures in place, is it possible to quickly share my screen, Matthew? Yeah, go for it. And Vicky will make you... Uh co-host i'll just give you on saturday i went out with well, matthew um i visited some local businesses that were reopening like hairdressers and hotels and things like that um this should open up oops i don't know if it's gonna work right Let's try again. Right. Can you see the back? No, wait. That's it. That's it. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Um, so basically, this is local hairdressers. 
showcasing what they're doing to put their customers safety first and then your face masks and then taking the temperatures as they're coming in. so they're now going to use this on their social media to put people's minds at rest of what they're doing and then this was at Chilworth Manor Hotel just examples of how they're protecting their customers and their staff so things like that you can use in your marketing there's Matthew <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I think so yeah so there's just an example of how you can showcase to your customers how you're going to protect them put their mind at rest get them to come and visit you. Excellent. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, so Sarah, I mean, what I was asking, I guess, was about, you know, the, the traditional ideas about travel are probably are probably going to change. I mean, I have a hotel in the New Forest. I hope people want to staycate, whatever that is. Uh, but at the same time, I have a business that works in the Caribbean, so I want people to get on a plane. So really interesting times for you and how you promote travel at the moment. Absolutely. Um, one of the things is, is that you really have to be sensitive to individuals because there's a lot of people out there who they absolutely can't even think about getting on a plane and going overseas. And there's other people who I've been in lockdown for three months. I'm absolutely desperate. I want to go tomorrow. So it, it, it's sort of the two camps, really. And you've got to be sensitive to both. Um, but yes, I think the future of travel is going to change. Um, and obviously, as a travel agent, we are completely inundated at the moment with um, information from all our suppliers, the airlines, hoteliers with all their, their COVID-related updates and cruise lines. Um, and we've got to stay on top of it all, um, and as well as all the different um, overseas regulations, the, um, the foreign office advice. Um, and I think in a way, and I'm fingers crossed that this will be the case, I think now more important is a time that people actually need a travel professional um, who can keep on top of all this for them. Um, also looking back to people who've had their holidays affected recently, I think a lot of people have had their fingers burnt who had booked themselves and are now having to try and do all the fights themselves for, for getting refunds back from the airlines who the hotel say, well, we were still open, so we're not going to refund you. Whereas, of course, if you book with a, an agent under an ATOR package or the package travel regulations, okay, we may be doing the battle for you. And sometimes the refund can't come as quickly as people want because we're still waiting for the refund from the airlines, but at least we're doing the battle for you. Um, so I, I think a lot of people are going to, to revert back and yes, they'll still do the, uh, the research themselves and know what they want, want but um, I, I, I think there, there will be that, that comeback. But um, yeah, tra travel is going to change um, and um, hopefully for, for the better. Um, let's say with all the, the new regulations coming into place, seeing all the different um, things that, uh, that the various suppliers are doing. Um, can only give you confidence and we've got to we've got the job of passing that on to reassure people because that's what it's all about at the moment absolutely and, and just flicking across to retail as well but claire and maybe paula you know people going into shops and all of that first there was that whole confidence to get in there but i wonder how shops are sort of rebranding and restyling and representing themselves i mean have you done anything special in, in your place paula Hang on, we just unmute first. Don't want to miss your pearls of wisdom. There, that's it. Perfect. Try that better. Again. Yes. No, we're working towards getting open. Ho hopefully, the end of the month. Um, we are a small shop, so I think number one, we we will have to um, limit the number of people coming in. But we'll have the Perspex screen and um, the hand gel all um, front of house, all very evident. Um, we might have to change our product range really because um, everything we sell, people will touch. So um, we just got a lot to think about really. Absolutely. And, and you've got to do it when you're ready and you're mm -hmm. confident to do that. But I think the message clearly is also from Dave just then, just, just put something up in the window or on your, on your messaging about all the things you are doing to make it yes. safe yes, to that, come in. That's really good advice. Yeah. And, and hopefully people will behave. I mean, I've only had one difficult person so far, um, uh, all over a cup of tea. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, our challenge in hospitality is that we're having to get people to fill in the track and trace. And of course, uh, New Forest people are too posh to give their details. <laughs> um, 
which is frustrating. I mean, you know, but it, um, you just want people to cooperate and be kind and be patient. Be kind is the hashtag. Are you picking up anything, Claire, from from members about getting getting the messaging out about come and spend and come and try things or do things differently? Yes, well, I think um, it's already been mentioned, but I think um, instilling confidence yes. in people, um, reassuring people, there's a lot of, um, of people feeling anxious and um, apprehensive about what steps are sensible for them to take next. So the fact that our yeah. hospitality and our retailers are reopening and are beginning to welcome people back is slowly helping people feel that they are confident that they can go out and do so safely. There will be setbacks. Um, mm -hmm. I have family in Melbourne, Australia, and they're all messaging me saying, take it easy because it's not nice going backwards. Um, so, you know, we do have to be sensible and take precautions. But um, I'm what, talking to one of my members recently and she runs a gift shop, actually. Um, she has her hand sanitizer station as people enter um, and she is having to ask everybody to sanitize as they enter the shop and some people are resisting saying oh but I did it across the road and she said no this is mandatory if you want to come into the shop to browse all we ask is that you take the sensible precautions that you can um, and she hasn't you know she has had people who've resisted initially but once they understand the thinking behind the precautions they're taking she's finding more and more people are getting used to that so it's just the new normal um but it's something that is an added um level of burden really on the individual um business owners because you know you're the ones who are trying to instill that confidence in your customers so it's a tricky one no, absolutely and not just a burden of the cost as well for all these things uh, every squirt of sanitizer is 12p so you know you, you think you know this is the problem um, so but go for it go for it sanitize at will um, but of course lots of good news for hospitality today from the chancellor i know the new forest isn't just about hospitality um, but it's a major sector here uh, over half a billion pounds a year in a good year is spent in hospitality um, but uh, things like the um 50% off your bills if you go and eat out on a Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday was announced today. The government mm -hmm. will pay for half of your uh, scones at a lovely tea room in Brockenhurst called the Thatch mm -hmm. Coffee. There are other tea rooms apparently, but um, you know there are lots of opportunities and this government support is going to be uh, very valuable for, for tourism businesses. Um, as well as keeping uh, View HR and other HR people busy. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff to read about the furlough scheme, about uh, if you bring someone back from furlough and keep them on till January, the government will just give you a check for a thousand pounds for doing that per employee. So lots of stuff happening. So if you haven't picked up on the summer statement yet, um, just especially, particularly if you employ people, or if you want to get some help from Carol at Totten College on um, apprenticeships and all sorts of stuff around work experience and all the good stuff that's available through Totten, there's 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 all sorts of detail in the uh, in the statements today. So we're coming vaguely towards the end. Bex, any any further thoughts from you? I think just like you say, just keep communicating. Um and just help build that confidence back up. So whether it's posters you can have put up or you know things that you're putting on social media, make it creative, make it stand out, make it friendly, um, just so that it really, it's in line with your brand. Um, it's continuing in your brand voice. You know, it's sort of welcome. That's what you want to do is welcome people back in and like I say, build that confidence. And tell us about the color yellow. Yellow, <laughs> that's a very welcoming color. <laughs> um, this what, is, what process do you go through for that? Because it's always a, an interesting one. And uh, we did that with escape yachting and with going purple. And the, the hotel was green. Um, but what drew you to yellow? Um, it's been, I think when I originally did my branding, it was when I'd come out from um, working full time within a, a corporate, I guess you call them. <laughs> 
but it was that kind of sense of freedom that I wanted and and it's that space to create and that's the space that I wanted to give to other people where they've got this space to create their own brand um so with the yellow it just it gives that freedom it's got that warmth it's got that space and it's about shining a light on what other people are doing um so that's where the yellow comes in for me but when I'm looking at the branding for other people again it's looking at how every single element is communicating whether it's your values you know your purpose everything's got a reason for being there and when you're thinking about the colors that you're using for your branding it's looking at the psychology of the colors as well what they mean to people and what it says about your brand um so it's there are so many different ways that you can communicate those values through so i find it all fascinating (laughs) and just on rebranding um we had a some many of you know kate uh, browning she's just rebranded from cornerstone to cherry uh cherry tree uh, it was in my weekly email so i feel awful not remembering oh. fully. uh anyway it's in the weekly email uh yesterday on monday um what, what rebranding uh, what what sh- why should people do it and uh you know without giving away all your secrets um <laughs> is is it it just sounds a bit scary to do but uh yeah i think it, people are quite daunted by it i think the time to have a look at it as to when you do need to rebrand is if you're changing direction or if you're not feeling confident with your brand, if like sometimes people, you know, they start out, they've got a logo and that's kind of all that they're going with. That's just to try and get their mess down and start building the business. But once they get to that place where they feel more established, it's really important that their logo and the rest of their brand assets are there to build that continuity. Um, you know, so you're constantly showing up and people recognizing you and that it's actually telling you, uh, telling other people what you're about. So it's really aligned with your values. Um, so yeah, it can be quite a daunting process and I have had, you know, sort of clients when I've had to go through this. So with, um, one of the hospices that I was working with, it was a bit like, oh my goodness, what do we do? Cause originally it was like, do we do a refresh? Do we do a rebrand? Um, but actually their current logo wasn't working, uh, for what they needed and for where their future was. So it's very much about a collaboration of different services all together. So it needed to mean something for each of those. Um, so there's so many ways of doing it so you can do like a slight refresh and it might just be that the colors are out and actually your logo is absolutely fine and we can build around that um, other times people are actually let's have a clean slate and start from fresh and I always keep their heritage within the branding um, because it's a very important part of their story so it's just looking at ways that we can translate that visually and where it is that you're heading towards so that it's positioning you absolutely and this course is a great opportunity to get Vicky on the hook now it's not just about the visuals it's about the words as well and Vicky helped us with NFBP uh, we kept the same logo because it's fine but it was about the words was and about rebranding can be about the words as well yeah it's the tone of voice as well um that comes through and the personality so yeah it's all part it's, of package of the brand yeah and it's about consistency as well so um when I first um started working with Matthew um I just with a fresh pair of eyes, looked across all the different assets and picked up a a couple of inconsistencies in uh, key messages and um, the way that the organization was presenting itself. So we had a little bit of an overhaul. Um, Think about what the priorities are, how you're going to articulate them uh, and make sure you focus on the end benefit to your target audience, whatever that might be, depending on your service. Um, so think about what what you're trying to achieve for them uh, and then work that back into what your key messages might be. Um, it's a pretty simple process, but a lot of people don't think about doing it. And I think it, the key, amongst the other key things you said there, the fresh pair of eyes, uh, mm. really important. Just get somebody who doesn't know your business to have a look at it mm. and try and work, if they can work out what it is you do from that and to help you. So there's all sorts of help here here on the on the call. Just before we finish, you've got Bex and Dave and Vicky, all sorts of people working together in that sort of field. So if that's something you want to look at, do get in touch with each of them. Um, and you know, thank thank you for that. Next week is uh, S- the murky world of SEO. Uh, we don't delve into it too much, but. Um, uh, we're going to have a go, and I'm sadly away for that one, but I shall watch the recording to make sure that everything goes well, which I'm sure it will. But Rob's going to host, and Vicky will look after you. 
but it's on SEO and uh, how to improve your online presence. Because a part of the thing about rebranding or a new website and so on is you can end up going backwards. And of course, at the moment, everyone needs to go forwards. So some, some really useful advice uh, coming up next week uh, as well. So do, do get involved in that one and don't be scared off by those three words SEO, uh, three letters SEO and what, or everything that it stands for. Um, any other yeah. last minute things from anyone before we go? I was just, well, I was just going to put in the chat, actually, if, if anybody does want to have a, a Zoom coffee or anything in the next week or so, have a chat about uh, any tips or advice they want for their marketing images and that, then obviously just give us a shout. Thanks, Dave. Even if it's tips on like photos on your phone or something like that, you know, happy to help. Perfect. And you never know, somebody offering a, a tip or a bit of advice might lead to people recommending each other because this shop local thing is really important. If I hear of anyone mm -hmm. using a photographer from London when there's someone in the New Forest or a communications specialist from Basingstoke when there is one somewhere in Sway, there's no excuse from now on. So no pressure there. We're going to look after each other as we have been. Thanks everyone for your time today, as always. Uh, have a quick look at the chat before you go. If you, want, if you haven't noted um, various people's contact details and so on. Uh, Carol, thanks for introducing uh, Totten College again. Uh, we'll, we'll keep promoting stuff and just send it through to me and I'll put it in the weekly email um, about the various opportunities of, through Totten College. So I will see you on in two weeks, but please do come next week for the SEO and have a good week. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Max.